In this video, I will try to print a functional alien with squeakers using the Uniformation GK2 printer. I'm sure you have seen these aliens amongst collectors by now. Well, they are produced and sold by Toy Story FR on Instagram. And I'm only part of the digital modeling process. He asked for my help. And since I'm going to model a toy mode alien for this channel anyway, I sent the model to him for free. And at the same time, I got a peek behind the curtains of what it's like to have something made in a factory. He sent me some aliens for a review and one very special prototype as a souvenir to remember our collaboration by. And I'm gonna share my story with you. It is really surreal to finally hold this in my hands after months of hard work. Having a screen accurate alien made of soft vinyl that actually squeaks is such a dream come true. I had to do a little modification to make this screen accurate, first by moving his hands down because the original model has it in T-pose like any other video game models. The majority of the time, however, was spent on his mouth because there should be a certain thickness to the lips and one thing I was really particular to get right about was his faded smile that disappears over here then reappeared as something like a dimple. The model has it stretched all the way so I had to fix that. Then we have to open his eyes one at a time. As for his body, it is mostly unmodified. I just added some details on the legs and the feet but as you can see, there isn't a pizza logo on the model, so I had to add it. I took his original texture and cropped out the pizza, but it's very rough and crooked. After adding some colors to see things clearly, it just didn't look nice at all. So I went online to find a sharper logo and put that on instead. Now it looks amazing. Lastly, I added some noise to the surfaces because the alien has some kind of texture to it and we wanted to replicate it. If I were printing it, I would stop here. But because it's supposed to be reproduced in a factory with metal molds, there are some modifications that had to be made, such as the antenna. They have to pull the head out of a metal mold. So the antenna has to be thicker to prevent it from breaking. Another thing that I had to change was the tip as they wanted it to be a perfect circle for some reason. Then, one really interesting thing that we had to deal with was the texture. Because the factory said it's not clear enough and they wanted to know how many mm the texture is. Which I was confused about because you saw how I made the texture, right? It's simply noise on the surface, there's no measurement to it. In the end, we ignored him and moved on. The next error was the years. As shown in the pictures, the sides were very thin and light could pass through it. So I had to go back to the drawing board to make them thicker. And that's about it for me. The rest was about finding the right colors and Toy Story FR was very meticulous about it, going through so many renditions before ending up with this. And it's perfect. I couldn't have made it better because it's not possible to print it flexible and paint it without cracking, right? Well, that's what I am going to try today. The antenna is something I want to fix, to make thinner to be more screen accurate. And we are going to try this on a new printer, the GK2 from Uniformation. There's been plenty of reviews saying how good it is, so when they approached me, I wanted to see for myself and my first impression? This is very similar to my Form 3, the expensive printer I started out with. Flip up cover, solid build plate with a latch on, inbuilt heater, plastic vest that slides in. Those are all premium features that you don't see in other budget printers, and I'm very happy to see them here. Let's take a closer look. The GK2 has a 10.3 inches screen which is bigger than other 8K printers but because the screen is still 8K, the XY resolution has dropped to 29.6 microns but you probably won't see the difference. These are the accessories that came with the printer. We have various tools that are really common with any other printers but the unique thing for me is that they provided fab shit and an extra screen protector for the screen. That's right, extra, meaning the printer already has one installed, which is a big bonus. They even provided papers for leveling, which obviously doesn't cost a lot, but 
it's the thought that matters. Same goes for the manual. The leveling process seems really easy and they have a video on YouTube showing you the process. I checked my leveling and it seems great, so I did not re-level. As mentioned, it has a lift up lid, which is such a convenience in my opinion. It has a carbon filter for the air purifier and magnets to hold it in place. Again, what a considerate addition. The slide in vat is pretty cool as well. Although I don't know how stable it will be with all the tugging in and out in the future, but it is a lot nicer than having to deal with knobs on the side. Oh, and did I mention that they provided a vat cover? One thing to note is you shouldn't slide it in from the start. It should be placed in the middle, then secured inwards. Speaking of knobs, the build plate has a latch similar to Form Labs, and I know it's subtle, but it's definitely a quality of life improvement. The build plate design is also pretty nice as it catches dripping resin easily without spillage. Today I'm going to use a resin with a slight flex and this is where you should stop filling otherwise it might overflow. I did some quick exposure tests and it looks great so I started preparing our 3D model. Obviously the first thing to do is to retrieve the thin antenna and replace the thick one. I added some noise to it and merged the ends together seamlessly. The next thing to do is to poke a hole through his end because the factory actually dealt with the squeaker part and I happen to have the same squeaker size so I followed their holes which comprises of a series of jagged edges probably to hold the squeaker in place. And then I hollowed the model with a thickness of 2mm, placed some holes in inconspicuous places and we are ready to print. After about 14 hours, the print came out perfect and I love the transparent green of this resin. Good adhesion on the build plate but also really easy print remover. Look at the super details you can achieve with this printer. The sharp logo came out nicely, the irises are great, mouth is great and the antenna is actually flexible. However, I cannot squeeze it at all. Which is puzzling because the exposure test is flexible, but this print is as hot as my rock. So maybe it's too thick, so I went back to the computer to hollow it at a 1mm thickness and then reprinted it. Alien number 2, finally with a flexible body. Oh, look at that! There was a failure at the back for some reason, but that's fine. I will try to fix this print because the, the resin is not cheap. Let's remove the support and see what we have to deal with. It seems like the back has some printed lines and a crack we need to seal. The front looks pretty good, which is fortunate. After failing to paint our squishy woody, I did some research about flexible paints and found these. Angela's leather paint. And it is flexible, will not crack or peel. And it's printed on the box, so that is what it's supposed to do, right? I hope it's not a scam. I sprayed some white paint as primer because I didn't know if regular primer would crack or not and we can see the details even clearer. The print is extremely detailed and I'm very happy with the result. I glued the gaps up, cut some failures off, sanded the flaws off, filled up the holes with UV resin and our preparations are over. We sanded the back as much as I could tolerate and we got the eyes fully painted white. Just gonna mask it up and start mixing some paint. Luckily, painting is rather straightforward. We have lime green for the face, then the hands, mask them, then blue for the body. Mask it, then dark blue for the belt and the boots, more masking, and purple for his collar. I already know we will have to do some touching up. Let's just hope we don't have too much to do. And I think it's just the collar that could use some cleaning up. Then we fill the logo up with some yellow, orange, beige for the mushrooms, red for the pepperoni, and green for the capsicums? What kind of pizza is this? Finally, black for the pupils and we are ready for the most important part, our squeaker. I bought some regular dog toy squeakers cut the squeaking part out and simply inserted it in. And we can start squeaking. Any cracks? No cracks? Ah, oh, okay, we're good, we're good. 
And that's it, the most screen accurate 3D printer alien with functional squeakers. I'm so happy we finally solved the cracking paint issue with leather paints and I can't wait to print other flexible toys in the future. Now we have a skinny antenna and you can even bend it. I do feel that painting it brings out a lot more details like the skin pores and the eyelids compared to the factory made one and there seems to be a slight shrinkage. I don't know. Anyway, this is my first time printing with the GK2 printer, so I can't really say much about it. But if you like the features you see, they do have some codes in the description for the Black Friday sale, so you can use it for your purchase. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.